to Amiga Auctions. Here we are at the New Order exhibition for, on behalf of Peter Hook. Hooky is here with us to chat through the items. How are you? Tired, actually, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and what do you think? This is around? unbelievable, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's weird when I have it all in my possession. It tends to be not laid out in any way, shape or form. So, to be honest with you, you've no idea what you've got or what it encompasses or what it stands for. And then when I see it laid out like this, I immediately think, what the hell am I getting rid of it for? <laughs> um, yeah, it is, it's almost breathtaking for me because every single piece is part of my history, part of the group's history for 40 years. And the importance of that history shows no sign of waning. Uh, if anything, it's actually becoming more important. So this is the weird thing. So now that I see all this stuff laid out, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> God, I can't believe it. Yeah, I mean, it's a hell of an achievement to have kept it. Yeah. Never mind, um, got to the bit where, you know, uh, doing an inventory, doing a book, which is what the auction catalogue is. Well, this is one of the more uh, unusual things uh, I've ever done, is showing uh, a virtual crowd around my life, if you like. So come and join me. We've got the um, award for Blue Monday here, being a massive hit in Italy. And this was given to me when I did a documentary. Oh God, this is so weird. Because I've not seen these for a while. This is just really, really odd. It's 10 albums or 10 new order albums of stuff here, 10, 10 new albums worth of stuff which you've collated over the years. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the periphery things that you come across, like looking at the letter from U2 yeah. that's in the corner over there, which um, was delivered to us on the day that we did Glastonbury. You know, like you've got the passes and yeah. uh, the envelope and it's signed by Bono and the boys who were obviously great fans of Joy Division when I met them when they were 15, when they came to meet Martin Hannett in Britannia Row. And those memories actually stay with you from then. And then to see how they've developed and, you know, the conversations that Bono had with Tony Wilson about um, swearing to take over where Ian Curtis left off, which you know you'd have to say whether you like the music or not he has achieved and all things like that then they're all little milestones and very early on i suppose in a true bass player fashion it struck me that these things needed saving and needed keeping for me my god there's just so much of it all the gold discs because originally we never got gold discs because factory wouldn't join the bpi which were how the givers, the British phonographic industry. And uh, Tony thought that it was the work of the devil. You, again, over there, next to you two, is the, the shirt that I wore on the last ever New Order gig. Uh, and I knew it was the last one because I knew that the band was splitting up after it. The Brazil one? Yeah. The Brazil shirt at the gig in Argentina. Um, and getting everyone to sign it afterwards because I don't think Barney thought we were going to go through with the split. I think yeah. Steve did, but Barney didn't. And Barney signed it, Andy Rourke, Ian Brown, you know, because it was a, quite a, a mank heavy gig, that one yeah. in Argentina, strangely yeah. enough. 140, 160,000 wow. people. Uh, and one of the most miserable nights of my life. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's one of the things that is unquantifiable about rock and roll is how um, people on the outside can look Wow, he's on stage in front of 160,000 people all going mad for his music. And yet you're, you're, as, uh, you know, you're as miserable as sin. Mm -hmm. It can only be um, there's very few businesses, <laughs> I think, that have that, that effect mm -hmm. because of the emotional impact 
that far out far outweighs the financial or the uh, the adulation that you get. It doesn't help you. Yeah! Oh my God! Look at it. It's such a waste that it's not used, isn't it? It is absolutely an incredible history. And the thing is, is that I suppose in a funny way, I've had my time with it. Yeah. You know, 40 years sitting with it all, you know, polishing it and forgetting mm -hmm. about it. And what I loved about the Joy Division auction was these things that I'd kept like myself, like King Midas in his castle. You know, ah, look at me letters, ah, look at this, da, 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 da. When you sat there on your own, it actually means very little. Mm. And yet when you put them out and let people see them, that's when people's imaginations are fired. Yeah. And you look at the collections from the gigs, right from 1980, right to when we split in 2007. You know, these people are going, oh, I was there. Oh, I wish I was there. And this is what has made me very happy about it. It's like a redistribution of the love that they have shown the band over the years. And this is your opportunity to have a piece of yeah, it. Exactly. You know, yeah. I'm looking forward to people enjoying, if you like, what I've enjoyed over the years because of the history. Are there any particular items within the auction which are going to tug at the heartstrings and really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got the awards. The Brit Award. Wow, getting a Brit Award. How fantastic was that? Yeah. And we've been back to the Brits and presented awards. Yes. But we've never got another one. So that led to a bit of a tussle over awards. <laughs> Imagine. Yes, yeah. It's been a great week. <laughs> I've hardly slept at all. The one that we missed. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It's the Blue Monday. I was thinking about this. The Anvil. Yeah, I mean, the Anvil was done by Tony Wilson to celebrate that we had more or less reached for him as a record company and for us as a band, we had reached a massive pinnacle, yeah. which was Blue Monday. Biggest selling 12 inch. It absolutely blew everybody away with the impact it had around the world in 1982, 83, right around the world. Um, the whole point of it being a minor success in England and then the summer with being played in the discos in Europe where everybody was on holiday fired the interest up absolutely massively and then they came back and the demand the record was re-released which was unusual for factory because factory did not do things like that once it was out it was done and it was over but that one they made they relented and re-released it so tony was celebrating the re-release and its huge impact and sales we weren't actually bothered i mean if you look at the picture that goes with it of where we're given the award it was quite flippant, quite uh, whatever, you know, I mean, because we always had this thing and in Joy Division that once you'd finished something, that was done and it was over and so it didn't matter and then you were on to the next thing. So we were all, always had that attitude. If this stuff could talk, it would um, probably moan its head off because it gets very badly beaten and a lot of the time the stuff inside survives and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> The important one, this was the Profit 5, the ones we used to uh, write Blue Monday and play Blue Monday. This could have been the very one that did it, according to the stickers. Um, so yeah, and this was a sequencer that we that went with it, the sequential circuit sequencer, with a little tape that goes in there, some tape somewhere. The end. <laughs> this is the setup from the last gig uh, in Brazil. So I used this setup for 27 years. And yeah, you know, that was what I sprayed on the amp at the end when we were doing the gig, because I knew it was the end. The Brazil gig. The Brazil, the no, no, the gig, Argentinian sorry, the Brazil gig, wearing shirt. the Brazil yes. shirt. It's good, <laughs> keep up, mate. <laughs> it's very difficult, I know. So yeah, it is weird, and I've not seen it for a while. So, you know, it's odd to be, odd to be back. That's my OCD kicking yes, in there. That's <laughs> big, yeah, they have to be straight, yeah. It's weird, I mean, definitely when I think about it on the way home, uh, uh, it will not be a dry eye. So aside from what's here, is there anything, oh, I'm sure there are things, but what, what have you kept hold of? <laughs> I mean, the guitar that Chris Eccles Hall made, which is over here, which is a 
a very special guitar to me, both of them are. Um, when you order finished in the old um, way of, you know, when a relationship ends and you have a haircut, <laughs> I got him to make me a, um, a new semi-acoustic in red because traditionally my, my guitars have been dark red, mm -hmm. crimson. So um, that one, which is called Viking, will be the one that I'm buried with if anybody needs to know that detail. So yeah, they won't be, you won't be getting that one, but it'll be a big coffin. Yeah, this is the Yamaha that's done every track, as you can tell by the... <laughs> this has written every track that um, New Order ever did on four string, this one guitar. Incredible, that. This, this probably is the hardest thing to let go. That it's done every single one and they used to use it a lot anyway they've all got stories it's incredible you know to walk around we could literally talk about each item and the story for hours you yeah. know it really is yeah but i've got nothing to hide no. all my shit's here yeah. and yeah good or bad yes. uh, i don't think that there's anything that i'm ashamed of in any way Well, even now I enjoy looking at this stuff and it's very difficult to let it go, but you know, everything, everything comes to an end. <laughs>